Learn from my mistakes. I have bought a lot of used cars over the years. Some of them absolutely amazing, some of them bank account breaking, and some of them so cheap that you could literally go buy a new iPhone from Apple right now and it would cost more than the car itself cost. I'm talking about the Infinity with that one. With that, I've gotten rid of a lot of used cars too, so I think I know when it is and isn't a good idea to actually get rid of a used car and pick up something else. That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video, so let's go ahead and do it. First and foremost, let's talk about maintenance. This is the reason that most people think they need to get rid of their used car. The truth is, however, it typically doesn't cost more to keep a car running via maintenance than it would to have a car payment on a new car or especially a used car. For example, our Beater Infinity here has cost us $75 a month to keep it running. That includes oil changes, new rear brakes and rotors in addition to a new radiator. Okay, $75 a month to keep it running for seven months with all of those things going wrong. That's not really bad at all considering the average car payment for a new car in the US right now is $479 per month. Thus, unless you have a catastrophic failure, like a transmission failure, or an engine locking up, or something like that, it really is hard to justify buying a new car just for maintenance reasons alone. Now sure, there are exceptions to every rule. If the next car you're buying is all cash, or you have a strong cash position in it, like 50% of it, and you're only financing 50%, sure, go ahead and buy whatever car you want to get next. But if you ask me, $400 one time for a radiator sounds a lot better than $400 per month to a bank. Maintenance isn't the only reason that you should buy a new car though. Maybe you just want something new, and that's perfectly a good reason. If you can afford it and everything lines up and you're good, go ahead, buy a new car. I'm not here to try to stop you from doing that. However, I am here to stop you from doing one thing. Do not roll any negative equity into a new car purchase, or a used car purchase, or any car purchase ever. If you do this, if you roll any negative equity over, it will screw you. No matter how much you hate your current car, no matter how much you want that new one, keep your current one until you can sell it without having any negative equity, or you own it all cash and can just sell it anyway. What I'm saying is if you have any negative equity at all transferring into the new car purchase, or your used car purchase, don't do it. I speak from experience here. At one point, having been $12,000 upside down on a car because I moved so much negative equity into it. Learn from my mistakes. Do not finance negative equity ever, period. Stay in your crappy car, stay in the car that you hate until you have paid it down enough to where you can either pay off all of the negative equity when you buy the next car using a down payment or until you just aren't upside down on it. If you do this, every time you buy a new car or trade in your car or buy a new used car, whatever you're doing, you will be fine. However, if you finance negative equity, that's when you can really start getting upside down and start really getting into some real pain. Another good reason to buy a new car is if you're going to be getting a lower payment in order to do so, and assuming your terms are gonna stay about the same, don't get a 72 month loan to get a lower payment. Instead, keep your loan at 60 months if you have a 60 month loan, that sort of a thing. But nevertheless, that is a good reason to buy a used car, especially if it's gonna free up some money financially for you, and overall, it's just a good idea to do that. For example, if you have a 72 month month loan and you have only paid on it for four or five months, you can go ahead and get rid of your car without losing any money and financing any negative equity and get a 60 month term loan and lower your payment while doing so. Go ahead and do that. Why wouldn't you? It makes sense, especially if you want the new car you're going into and you know, it's going to save you money in the long run. It just makes sense to do that. Another example is if you're purchasing a new car and the new payment will just in general be 20% lower. Again, don't stretch your loan out over 72 months. That's a quick way to get upside down. But nevertheless, as long as the new car you're going into is going to have a lower payment than what you have right now, it can make sense to do that. And that's something I'd recommend going ahead and doing. If that's the reason you're wanting to upgrade your car, congrats. You have Nick's approval, like you care. Overall though, there aren't really too many good reasons to buy a brand new car unless you're just paying for it all cash you don't care to take that depreciation hit. However, you can buy many used cars for a good price and the maintenance won't kill you on them. Just make sure you get a pre-purchase inspection, you look at many cars, and you make sure you Google and know how to diagnose and like look at from the onset any very common issues cars have. For example, a BMW fuel pump going bad is something that's very common and something you definitely need to look out for. I almost fell down there. Nevertheless, go ahead and let me know other reasons you should get rid of your car in the comment section down below. I'm interested to see that. If you agreed with me, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. My name is Nick, and uh, I'm out. Peace.